Hi, my name's Arun Seigel, and my parents are from India, but I was born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts as a first generation American. I play percussion with the Wobbly World, including the Mridangam, which is a South Indian classical hand drum, along with beatboxing or vocal percussion and rapping. So my influences for playing music start with my mother. She came to this country to be an engineer, but was an incredibly passionate dancer and musician. Her mother is a phenomenal veena player, which is like a South Indian slide guitar. And so growing up, music was always in the house. My mother, as I said, came to be an engineer, and then as soon as she was settled and had a job, opened up her dance school and ran a dance academy in Boston for over 30 years. And it was incredible because I was three years old and there was always dance in the house. Her dance studio was in our basement. So every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was just seeing dance students and hearing all this music and it was so exciting to me and I wanted to be involved with it. And so some of the instruments that I would hear would be a violin, which is both a Western instrument as well as an instrument in Indian music. And so I started playing the violin and the viola at age five. And then I really liked the percussiveness of the feet and of, of, of a lot of the, the more tribal type of music you would hear. And that was played with this South Indian hand drum called the Mridanga. And I thought it was so cool because it was this cylinder that you played with your hands and you didn't need that much setup or anything. You just had one drum and with your hands you could do it. It was so cool. You know, a lot of people play the drum kit where it takes you an hour to set up and or even the tabla, which is two different drums that need to sit a certain way. With the mridangam, you had one instrument that you got to carry around, take out, and just with your two hands, you could make an incredible range of sounds. And that's how I got started. From there, I, I, I followed in the footsteps of my big sister, who also was a violin player and a dancer, and so I took motivation from her. And then every summer, we used to go to India, either in the summer or the fall, and I would take Mridangam classes there. So I had a teacher in Boston named Praveen Sitharam, who was amazing and got me to where I was. And then in India, I would learn from uh, a great Mridangam player named Shakti Vale, and later got to take advanced classes with one of the five greatest players uh, alive named Manarguri Ishwaran, and I got to learn from him from high school on, and still those three teachers I hold so near and dear because they're the ones who got me to where I am today. And the last thing I'd like to point out is that my mom and dad both came to America as engineers, but both love music and dance. And so for me, I always got to be having both of these in my life. So I went to MIT to study engineering for undergrad and graduate school, yet at the same time, I studied at the New England Conservatory from the age of eight, uh, uh, violin and music theory and conducting, and eventually got to simultaneously run a tech company while conducting one of the oldest symphonies in the country. So, the languages and dialects that I speak range from, we can start with the basics, English, Hindi, those were the languages that were spoken in my household growing up. My mother is of Tamil origin, and she speaks Tamil, and by virtue of being a Murthungam player, you kind of have to know Tamil because the whole Carnatic music world and South Indian musical world is all based on the Tamil language. And so that's what I had to speak growing up. The teachers I had all spoke Tamil. When I would go to competitions or performances, that was really the language that was spoken because the music is really headquartered in Chennai, if you will. And Chennai is right in the heart of Tamil Nadu where Tamil is the main language spoken. Past that, I, my mother is also a priest, and so growing up, I learned all of the, um, what's called shlokas, the mantras, right? All of these prayers in Tamil and Hindi, and then, of course, in Sanskrit, which is basically the Latin of India. And so, by learning all of these prayers in Sanskrit, 
Some of the times when you'll hear me rapping, you'll hear me rapping in English, sometimes in Hindi, sometimes in Tamil, and sometimes in Sanskrit. And then just for fun, um, from high school on, I learned Chinese as well. And so there are a few times you've heard me rap in Chinese as well, and that continues on. So those are the main languages I speak. But of course, by virtue of being Indian, there are so many different words that you pull from other languages. Urdu sometimes, Arabic sometimes, Farsi sometimes. So you'll hear me say some of those words as well. But the main languages are English, Hindi, Tamil, Sanskrit, and Chinese. I met Freddie Clark, like most people, in a way that you can never forget. The man has an incredible charm and energy and pulls you in immediately. And I remember the moment I met him, I said, I don't know who this guy is, but I need to be friends with him. So it started because I am the conductor of the San Francisco Civic Symphony. It's one of the oldest community orchestras in the country, the oldest on the, on the West Coast. We've been around for over 90 years. And I've been conducting that organization for eight or nine years now. And through my symphony, I had the good fortune of, I've had the good fortune of collaborating with so many different artists and musicians. And through that, at one of the times, I was performing and I got to see Freddie perform in the same venue as I did. And it was crazy because we were not in the same world. He was playing incredible flamenco guitar and I was conducting, I think it was a Prokofiev piece at that time. Totally different world. We started talking and I told him that in addition to conducting, I also happened to be a professional Merlangam player. And he said, that sounds like a funny instrument. I want that. Bring it next time I see you. And I did. We jammed together. And since then, we never looked back. Performing with Wobbly World is a one-of-a-kind experience. Wobbly World is such a cool group because it brings together so many different cultures and music styles, languages, and it's incredibly inclusive and welcoming. So it's both a place to kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's both a melting pot where you get to kind of tie these all together, but it's also a place where you can still be unique and express your individuality. So I get to bring my Mridangam and I get to play a Mridangam solo in a very traditional style where people hear it and say, wait, that is a classical Indian Merlangam solo, there's no questions. But then I also get to blend right in to a Cuban song or to a cha-cha or to a belly dance song that sounds like it should have a Merlangam, but you're not quite sure. And then the fact that I get to stop and out of nowhere start beatboxing and then rap in three different languages and end with the instrument I started on the Merlangam is such a unique forum. Nowhere else has this, and I think this is why the Wobbly World is really building the future of music. Everyone knows that musical styles are so distinct, and then how do you move forward? It's with new technology and with new fusion concepts, with bringing Indian music with jazz together, and then adding some Cuban Latin beats on top of that. That's how you, you push music forward and culture forward. And Wobbly World is this incredible microcosm of what music is and what music should be. And so for me to be a part of that is something that I've never been able to replicate before and I don't know how I'd ever replicate again. What I found with all of these diverse cultures in Wobbly World is that the diversity is, and, and, and differences and all that we find is only if, if you look for it and in name. But when you start playing music together, the differences are cast aside. It's not about what political party I'm in favor of or how I feel about you know the pandemic or anything related to um, my, my feelings of me versus you or my religion and your religion don't get along. It's not about any of that. In fact, what's so cool here is we play so much music from so many different cultures and religions and rather than for 
in certain forms you might say, oh, I don't identify with that. That's not my culture, that's not my religion. Half of the time when I'm rapping in Hindi, I'm rapping about the god Hanuman. He's a monkey god um, from, from Hindu mythology and has such amazing stories about him. And I love rapping about him. It's so fun. He's so exciting. Sometimes he grows to be as big as a mountain and as sometimes he grows to be as tiny as a mouse. And I love telling his stories. And I do that sometimes when I rap here. And nobody looks and says, oh no, you're talking about Hanuman. Hanuman isn't my god. They say, how can I add more flavor to this story of Hanuman? Because these mythological stories are partially based in fact, and I'm sure partially based in our views of them, how we want to talk about them, how we want to sing about them. So why not bring us all together and sing and talk and tell these stories in a way that maybe has been done before and maybe not. And when it comes to the wobbly world, we're able to take all of these different songs, whether it's from a Jewish culture or from a Muslim culture or from a biblical, biblical culture and put it all together in a way that both we are being respectful of the cultures, but also adding our own take and our own flavor and our own contribution. So rather than for saying, you and I are different, let's be apart, we say, you and I are different, let's come together and merge those differences to make something beautiful that the world hasn't seen until now. I believe the future of the world is the wobbly world. Let me explain. People have become more divided than ever before. And the reason, in my belief, is because they see people as others, as different than them. They can't identify or relate to somebody who has a different perspective than them, has a different skin color or a different religion. What's cool about the wobbly world is we bring all of it together. So for example, if you are somebody from a Middle Eastern country and you understand belly dance music, well, you'll hear that in Wobbly World. So all of a sudden, you'll be able to identify with what we're doing. But then when a cha-cha comes in that you weren't expecting or aware of, or maybe a piece from Hindu mythology comes in, or Hava Nagila, which is a really fun song from the Jewish culture, you will hear it and not say, oh, this is weird and different because you're hearing your music throughout the whole thing. And so all of a sudden, instead of saying, hey, that's different, I don't want it, you say, oh, that's different and works with me and works with my music and my culture. And so every time we play a song, we kind of push in a little bit of a different direction. And it's hard for you, for you to go from here to here with nothing in the middle. But if we can take you from here, push you a little this way, a little that way, a little that way, all of a sudden, Hava Nagila is something that you know how to sing. And a song about the Hindu monkey god Hanuman, and a song about Jesus, and they're all brought together and being respectful of each culture and each religion. And that is the way you bring the world together. That's the way you bridge the divides that we have. And of course, Music is the one universal language. You don't need to understand what I'm saying to be excited, to want to dance, to feel the energy from whatever I'm playing or saying. And that's the incredible thing about what we're doing here with the Wobbly World. It's not just about my culture versus your culture versus your culture. It's my culture and your culture and your music coming together to build a better future and a better place that we can all be excited to be a part of. I come initially from the world of technology. And in technology, we were so divided for so long. In, for example, take cars. You have American cars, you have German cars, you have Chinese manufacturing, Korean cars. And we thought about everything like that. And then with software, all of a sudden it wasn't, this piece of software was made here or there or there. I work with a number of folks in software we developed some of it in America, some of it in Bulgaria, some of it in Poland, some of it in, in India. And 
it's not that it's an Indian piece of software here and an Irish piece of software here. It's just a piece of software we're put, we put out that anyone globally can use. And that is so cool because it means that it's made by everybody for everybody. In music right now, we are split up into different genres. We have, when you look at the Grammys, there's your, your section for R&B and you have your, your country music and you have your Latin music. And it's, it's so segregated and we say, oh, are they in this category of music or that category of music? But now, thanks to technology and thanks to globalization in general, things like Wobbly World can happen. Where if you had to classify, is this South Indian classical music? Is this a hip hop group? Is this a flamenco group? You wouldn't be able to say that because it's a little bit of all of that, right? If you had to nominate us for a Grammy, you need to nominate us for everyone because we're every one of those things. And that's what's so awesome about what we're doing with the Wobbly World. And that's also where the future of music is. It's with taking some from this culture and some from that culture to make it even more perfect. I come also from a classical music world. I conduct a symphony and we have very strict, there's literally a thing called symphonic form where it is, this is the form of the symphony. It must have this and then that and then that. And now people are saying, but what if I put an electric violin in? What if I DJ'd a little bit? What if we had some Indian hand drums in the symphony? These are all real symphonies that I've conducted before that I'm pulling references from. Now you're breaking out of that mold of thou shall do this and thou must look like that. And that's what we're doing here with the Wobbly World. We're not one type of music. We are just world music, which is just music. And that's what we're making here. And that's what the future of music will be. It'll be take the best from everything to make the most rich and robust experience that you can for any and every listener. Freddie Clark started the Wobbly World over 25 years ago and has been working tirelessly on this concept since then. And we musicians have always been ready for this. We've been excited to collaborate and work together and break down barriers to create something new and meaningful and special for all of us. But it's taken the world two decades to get to the point where they're ready for it. But now, the dialogue that we have is all about how do we break down barriers? How do we you know, really rid ourselves of the racism that we have, the xenophobia, the, 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 the hatred? How do we bridge those gaps? It's more important now than ever to do that. And right now is when a lot of folks in the world are taking a good look at themselves and saying, how do we be better? And I think the wobbly world is the answer. It is bring together people from every culture to create something incredible that they couldn't have done on their own. And this, I think, is a perfect band to show that the sum really is greater than the parts. That you take every one of us individually who knows how to solo by ourselves and who is master of our craft and put us together and force us to think even more creatively and out of the box. And we are creating and will create something that the world has never seen before and that also they've never quite felt before as they hear this music. But this music is what really, I think, sh shows and serves as a model for how the world can be and how unique cultures can retain their individuality while coexisting together at the same time.